Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today, I'll show you how you can kick in Unity or punch or basically play any animation that you want um, when you click your fire button or your left mouse button. So basically, you walk around, you click the button and you kick. Pretty cool, right? This can be like any type. You, you can just add like a lot of things like games have certain like emotes that they display. You press a button, he starts dancing or do does whatever. So basically, yeah, this shows you the uh, elementary things that you need to know about playing and triggering animations from your animator window. It's really simple, so let's get into it. Alright, I made this little script over here. Um, first, it takes a uh, animator, which I called mAnim, for short for my anim, hater, <laughs> and... Um, it's an animator, so we need to find that animator, and because our animator is located on our player, which is tagged player, we need to find it. And this is here, this is the animator component. So what you do is you go to mAnim is equals to game game object dot find with tag player. So you have to make sure that your player character is tagged player. So just go to tags and click the add tag thing. If you do not have the player tag, but you probably will click plus and add the player tag. Make sure it's all the same over here as you call it in your scripts. And um, after that, you just get the component the, of the player, the animator component, which I showed you like 20 seconds ago. And uh, after that, you have set up your mAnim. So now you can do whatever with it and um, you can do any of the functions that the animator has. So one of those functions is, is a trigger, which we use to trigger our animation. So in the update function, we check if input.getButtonDown, fire1, um, that's just a different name for the left mouse button. If you, if you imported uh, Unity uh, inputs in your um, project, which you probably did, uh, you will get this one. I'm 99% sh sure that you got this input, but if not, it's pretty simple to create it so just go to edit project settings input and over here you're gonna have this input manager and basically you're gonna have all of these some I added some over here but you're gonna have basically the first like 18 or 17 I'm not sure so here find the first fire one uh, make sure it's called fire one and the positive button is the left CTRL so with the left control button or the um, mouse O, which is the left mouse button. If you do not have this, you can just create it by setting the size to one up that's already written over here and just call it whatever you want. Or we'll call it fire one and make sure that it's the same in the script. After that, we just go my animator dot set trigger punch. We just set the trigger for the punch animation or the kick animation or whatever it is called. I just called it punch because it was a punch before, but now it's a kick. Now, the other thing you need to do is, because your player is moving around, he has his controller and he has his avatar. If you're wondering where I got this, uh, basically I made it. I made uh, most of it, the models and everything I got off the website. Uh, the link will be in the description. I always forget to put the link of these uh, videos which use all of this layout and this like village and everything. I know where it's from, but yeah. Um, I always forget to put the link to it in the description, but I will this time. And for the animator and the third person character, it's basically from the Unity Standard Assets third person controller package, so you can just get it from there. Now you have this third person animator controller, and just double click on it, and it's going to pop up an animator window. If it does not, just go to click window and click animator over here. And uh, here we have all of these weird... Um, animations and everything you probably do not have all of these because i made most of them see jutsu and jutsu three. i just had fun with this made it um wanted to make a little small little project so you're, you probably won't will not have any of these which the two most important ones for this video is the grounded and the kick one so yeah what do you do here let me sh i'll just delete this so i can show you so now you have this grounded layer. We need to add a kick animation so we can kick, right? So I have a kick animation over here. I'll add this one standing. I can like click on it and preview it. I can drag my Naruto model over here to preview it with him. 
So yeah, it looks pretty cool, right? Um, I'll just drag this animation over here. I'll call it a different name. I'll call it kick. And um, I'll set the speed, for example, to 2 because I think it's a bit too slow. And I'll set the foot IK to be enabled because I want it to use foot IK if it can and to stick to the ground and not like be weird and like slide over the ground. Now we have to make some transitions to this one. So if you want the animation to be played when you're on the ground, uh, you can just make a transition from the ground to kick. If you want it to be able to, uh, to be played um, when you're doing whatever, you just make a... Sorry, shot a bit. <laughs> uh, you just make a transition uh, from any state to kick instead of ground to kick but I'll just use the ground one for this tutorial now what you do you uh, make a transition from the why can I not say transition you make a transition from grounded to kick and you make a transition from kick to grounded because we want to be able to come back from the kick animation to the idle or whatever now, uh, in this transition, you can see how it's going to look, so it's going to do the idle and then it's going to kick really quickly. Now, we do not want this because what this does is basically when we, when we click the fire one button, it's going to start playing the idle animation again and then it's going to play the kick one. We wanted to play the kick animation instantly, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this over here and I'm going to untick all of this. I'll just put it over here, I guess, and I'll make it a bit smaller, like this. So now how it looks like, he's just instantly going to kick. That's what we want to do. And when we're finished with the kick, so now he's just going to, I can like drag this a bit more, I guess, yeah. So this can look like this. Yeah, all right, this is okay. And now we need to have some conditions for the animation to be played. When we go back to the script, we have this set trigger punch and what is this well we need to create it it's basically a trigger condition for the animation to start playing so here in the parameters we have a lot of different um, conditions so when you're in, now go to the parameters and when you're in the parameters just go to the little plus icon and create a trigger and call this trigger punch because that's how we called it in the script Sorry, I cannot write with one hand. It's pretty weird. Now, um, you have to use this trigger in order for it to work. So, we're going to make a condition for this animation. We're going to make it the punch trigger. And we do not need one back. So, now how this is going to look like is um, basically you save this. You save the script. When you go here and when you press the fire one, oh yeah, you also um, you also need to add the script. Forgot to say that you need to add the script to your player. When you're done, just go to the game and click the fire one button, and it's gonna he's gonna start kicking. Pretty cool, right? So yeah, it's a pretty neat little idea. Pretty simple to do, I guess. Um, you can like spam kicks, which is not really good. We do not want that. You can like create a little cooldown timer for like when you can kick again. I'll do that in a different video if you guys really want to. But for now, this is it. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to make, and uh, pretty easy to replicate. So, yeah. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like it. You can uh, ask me questions, etc. And the comments and yeah i'll see you in the next one bye